Hey everybody, it's Diane Gale here from the blog and YouTube channel Sustainable Slow Living and today we are going to make some peanut butter candy apples. Um, haven't made them before, not going to lie, hoping that it works out because it's going to be a bummer if it doesn't. Um, I picked this style apple, there's a bunch of them here too, I don't know if they're in your view or not. Um, I don't know anything about this apple. It's a brand I never heard of. It's called Sweet Tango. And on SweetTango.com it says that it is a crisp and sweet apple with a lively touch of citrus, honey, and spice. That it is perfectly crunchy and satisfyingly juicy. So we'll see. The apple that I would have normally made this with would be a Granny Smith because I know that they work in these kind of candy apples because I've had these style of apples before. I just haven't made them. But I liked, um, honestly, I liked the shape of these. I thought they were going to make a good picture. And sometimes pictures are important for me for the blog. So I hope that it works out. I mean, any apple is going to make a great peanut butter candy apple. <laughs> Let's face it. But uh, sometimes you don't want something too sweet. You know, kind of want to offset the chocolate and peanut butter a little. But we'll see. Anyway, this is what I chose, Sweet Tango Apples, and I have six of them here. I'm not exactly sure how many I'm going to need because we're going to work with this recipe as we go. It's going to be kind of flexible in some ways because I'm just developing it for the blog right now. So I learned something about apples that I didn't know, and that is that an apple naturally produces its own wax. And it does that so that it will stay fresh longer, it'll hold in the moisture, and stay fresh longer. And what happens is when an apple gets washed for market, it washes away some of that wax. So um, they replace it with a synthetic wax to mimic those same features, you know, to make more money on their product, right? They need it to stay fresh longer. And that synthetic wax um, can keep your candy coating Normally, uh, the candy coating would be that corn syrup, red candy coating. It can keep that, or like we're gonna we're gonna mold them in peanut butter. Sometimes you do them in caramel, and it'll make it so it doesn't stick. So what you have to do is you have to try and wash as much of that off of there as you can. And well, all I did was I took a little tiny container and I filled it with white vinegar, and I went over next to the sink and I had my vegetable brush and I would dip it in the white vinegar and scrub the apple. Dip it in the white vinegar and scrub the apple. And then I just rinsed them off and I dried them with a towel. So hopefully that is going to work. So that's how I got these ready. But um, first let's talk about the candy apple that we're making today, the peanut butter candy apple. So your typical candy apple, like I, I just said, is usually done with that hard shell red candy, right? And they actually have a way to do, um, you can do it um, in black, that same hard shell shiny candy, but in black. And they're very, very cool, <clears throat> especially for this time of year. But I don't like to eat them. I mean, they taste okay, but like, come on, let's face it, who really wants all of that sticky candy in their teeth? And then basically that is corn syrup. So I started to search for something different. I always bought what they called a gourmet candy apple at a, um, a candy shop back home. <clears throat> and um, I know that they did them in caramel and then in chocolate and then in like all kinds of, I mean, candies, they would put Reese's Pieces on there or Oreos or sprinkles or peanuts or whatever. I mean, they did it a lot of different ways. They were actually beautiful and they had a big thick candy wall on them. I'm pretty sure they also did it with peanut butter and then chocolate. I really can't remember. It's been like 10 years since I've had one of them because I've been away from home for more than eight years. So um, I don't know if they did or not. I'm going to do that today um, because I want to skip, like even with the caramel, there's tons of corn syrup. And I want an amazing, delicious, wonderful candy apple that makes me smile in the fall season and taste freaking fabulous. And I don't want a ton of corn syrup. So before you even get started with your apples 
end with washing them, you need to collect some sticks for this project. And basically you can see like there's my pinky and there's that stick. They're kind of the same size. Um, you just want a stick that's sturdy enough to hold an apple on the top of it. When you hold that stick in your hand, you want to be like, oh yeah, if I put an apple on there, it would support it. Because um, it's not only the size of the stick, it's about the flexibility too. So you want something rigid and um, supportive. <clears throat> and then I just went out and collected sticks that looked like they were going to work when I stuck them down in an apple. Um, I had just broken them off when I was collecting them out in the woods. And then I brought them in and I measured them to about nine inches and I cut the one end at a slant. I just thought that it looked better when they were done on the tray than um, having them cut straight off. So your slanted end is going to stick up. Your other end, you really don't have to put a point or anything on it. It really is just gonna shove down in this apple. It looks harder than it is watching me do it because I have a lot of trouble with my hands from waitressing for so many years. But it will just shove right down in the apple. There's going to be a little bit of juice there. And then there you go. Right? Perfect. Um, I just like, you can obviously use um, any kind of stick or any kind of support that you can put in there. I'm sure there are things that you can purchase as well online. I just think that these look really fabulous for the season. Um, I don't know. They have a special look to me. So you've got your apples, you've got them washed, you've got your sticks, you've got them inserted. It's time to make your peanut butter. So for that, in this bowl, I have one and a half cups of peanut butter. I just use a natural peanut butter, butter that has no other ingredients. Um, it's usually thicker and it's not as sweet as like a Jif or a Skippy or something like that. If it is already separated in the jar, you could just take it, uh, the whole thing right out of the jar and throw it in your food processor and just, you know, re-blend it. It takes a second. Um, I do that with the peanut butter whenever I use it anyway because I do buy natural peanut butter. My peanut butter never has more than two, two ingredients, peanuts and salt. Sometimes it doesn't even have salt and so I often have to blend it back together because that kind of peanut butter separates. So, that was an aside. I have one and a half cups of well-blended natural peanut butter. I have a half a cup of butter and a teaspoon of vanilla in this bowl. And I'm gonna take and I am going to blend them together well until they're creamed together. What you're looking to do is you're looking to bust up all your butter. So if you can see that there are still some little tiny pieces of butter in there, that's okay. They're going to go away as we start to add the sugar, which we're going to do next. But you, you just want to make sure that you have that big stick of butter blended in with that peanut butter. And then obviously the vanilla has to be distributed throughout the mix. Now I have three cups, I'm sorry to say it, three cups of powdered sugar here. It's a lot of sugar in this recipe, which is another reason to not go with like a commercial peanut butter that has sugar in it. And we are going to use all three cups. But I'm going to put them in here a half a cup at a time. Um, most of my bowls are packed, so I'm working with whatever bowls I have. I'm going to do like a half a cup over the top, and I'm going to blend it. And then I'm going to repeat until all of my sugar is blended into my peanut butter. You have to be a little careful, because that sugar might poof out of there on you. All right, you guys, here we are. I have powdered sugar everywhere. I kind of expected that to happen. This is what we look like at this point and I'm going to take this just the way that it is and I'm going to put a piece of plastic wrap over top of it and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for about an hour. I want it to chill in there. I want it to get nice and cold um, so that I can mold it around the outside of my apples. So I will put this in the fridge. I'll be back in about an hour and we'll get those apples covered in some peanut butter. Okay guys, so this was in the fridge for an hour. It's nice and cold. Um, I'm going to take, I'm not sure how this is going to work. We're supposed to mold this around these apples. So I guess I'm going to start by making a little bit of a disc. 
of peanut butter. That's way too much. Way, way too much. I think that's way too much too. And then putting the apple in it. And just working the peanut butter up the apple. That seems to be working. We're losing some peanut butter. <laughs> but that's okay. Actually, I think this is going to work. So I'm going to try and push some up from the bottom and get that bottom kind of flat. Some of the apples aren't that flat on the bottom. And then just continue to work the peanut butter up. That works beautifully. Haha! -ha, very nice. Very, very nice. Yeah, I'm loving this. It is starting to come off the apple though, right? Warn about that. That's why we try to get the wax off. Okay, it's starting to get warm too from my hands working it. So I'm going to finish up. So while you're putting the peanut butter on these, you don't want them to get too warm. They get warm from working with your hands and then they start to separate from the apple. I realized that as I was putting it on and that was what I read while I was researching how to do this as well. So I'm going to put this in the refrigerator and then as I coat these, I'm gonna put them on it in the refrigerator so that it stays cool. But while I'm getting all of that done, I'm going to melt down some chocolate. So I think what you're gonna need for this is an 11 and a half ounce bag of milk chocolate chips. And they are just that, chocolate chips. Um, I'm not 100% sure that that's gonna be the right amount, but that's what I'm gonna melt today to see what we use. And because it'll be easier to work with for my first time. And then we'll just eat the leftover chocolate and I'll get the right amount in the recipe, which of course will be on the blog and the link down below. But anyway, I'm gonna get that in the fridge. I'm gonna turn this chocolate on. I just did kind of a homemade double boiler here. I took a bigger pan and I put some uh, rings from canning jars in the bottom of it and some water. And then I put a smaller pan in on top of those rings so it doesn't sit directly on the heat. I'm gonna turn that on to medium and get it melting. Um, and then we'll be able to dip our apples. So I'll get these done. I got that melting and I'll be right back. So I did another apple and because it was my second one, I was better at it. Hopefully that's going to remain the case because I want to show you how I did it because it was really easier all the way around. So I just took and I made a flat disc of peanut butter in my hand and I set this apple down in it and then I pressed on the bottom to kind of encourage the extra peanut butter to work up around the apple. And then I just took the rest of the peanut butter and worked it around the apple. And then you want to just work from the bottom up and just keep pressing it up toward the top, keep pressing it up toward the top. And you should be able to coat your whole apple and then um, I'll finish this one up. But then when you put this on your sheet pan, on your parchment lined sheet pan, to put it in the refrigerator, what you want to do is you want to put it down on the pan and you want to press on it a little to flatten out this bottom because this is your opportunity to get your apples to stand up without toppling over on you all the time. You can kind of mold that peanut butter into a flat shape where you can't really mold your apple into a flat shape. So without the peanut butter, it won't stand up on its own. So anyway, I wanted to show you that because it's a lot easier to do this. Um, I am going to get this one in the fridge. Okay, you guys, <laughs> I'm back. So the chocolate is melted. What you have to watch with chocolate is you don't want to stir it too often but you need to stir it kind of regularly. Chocolate will look like the little pieces are keeping their shape until you stir it and then you'll start to see um, how dumb it is. I did one of these. I tried to dip it, 
dipping is not what's going to work here. So I just got myself a little teaspoon and I just painted it on. Um, it takes a minute, but actually it didn't take as long as I thought. The biggest problem that I'm going to have is the other thing about chocolate is it hardens up really quick. So this chocolate that's in this pan is already hardening. So I'm going to have to keep putting it back on the heat. But actually, it gives it kind of a cool look um, when you spread it on here. You know, I mean, I guess you could go in any direction you want, but I kind of like this around the apple kind of swipe that I have going on. And um, then I took, we're almost ready, I took and I rolled this in chopped peanuts. And I have a cup of chopped peanuts here. I took and kind of spread them out to the edges of the bowl a little. And then I just took and rolled this so that they came like part way up. And I think it worked really well. I think it's a really cute look. I'm really happy with them. Definitely happy with them. So I'm going to do the rest. And then I'm going to come back. And we're going to cut into one of them because I already know they're going to be fabulous. I'm crazy happy with how they look. Before I go, two things I want to tell you. I did not keep these in the refrigerator um, while I was putting the peanut butter on. I kept them in the freezer. And it was okay because it didn't take an extraordinary amount of time to melt my chocolate. And the other thing is the peanut butter does get hard to work with if you don't go quickly enough. So you want to try and get them covered pr pretty quickly. Um, and then actually there is yet another. Um, once I have all of these done, I'm going to put them in the freezer so that the chocolate hardens before I come back and cut a piece with you because it would take forever for that chocolate to harden. It'll still harden in the fridge, but it'll, uh, it'll just go quicker in the freezer. Don't forget your apples in the freezer because you don't want your apples to freeze. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in a minute. Here we are. They were 15 minutes in the freezer. They're nice and set. They're adorable. I tied a um, ribbon around this one. I think I would do that if I was putting them out at a party or handing them out to people um, as gifts. These would make a really cool uh, hostess gift. But we are going to take one of these and... Um, We'll take this one, it's a little boogered up, and we're going to cut it. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's gorgeous. We're going to cut it again. And again. And get that core out of there. There it goes. So here it is, you guys. It's kind of staying together. It looks delicious. Mm. Oh my goodness. Because it is divine this is really good you are going to love these and look at how fun they are they're just fun they're just fun to give to someone fun to share with your family fun to make for yourself and so I hope you do make yourself some and I'm so glad that you joined me here today and you and I are going to get together again really soon